Steve, and Jim Moreno, welcome to the program, Lawrence Kasten. It's good to see you. Thank you. You know, when you think of the list of the all-time top money-making films, and your name is attached to quite a few of them, what are the thoughts that, that go through your mind? It's very exciting to um, be associated with a film that touches people or uh, in such a way that they will go back to see it again and again. You know, that's what really makes these blockbusters is a repeat business of the people who just want to have that experience again mm -hmm. and again. It's thrilling to have created something like that. Um, sometimes I worry that the blockbuster mentality has had a very negative effect on Hollywood. I know that it's made it hard to make movies like this. Um, because there's not much faith that adults will go to the movies. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that they will if the right movie is there. As a director, <coughs> do you have any aspirations to make a film like, to direct a film like Return of the Jedi or Empire Strikes Back? Um, I have not too much interest in science fiction. The problem with a lot of these effect mo effects movies, and I've been offered a lot of them, <clears throat> is that you spend an enormous amount of time dealing with machines, mm -hmm. not only when you're making the movie and on the set, but later you're, so much of the movie is constructed, you know, with special effects. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing that interests me about movies and the reason I always wanted to direct was working with people. And these big effects movies don't really offer you that. Mm -hmm. And as a writer for those effects movies, how much of an input do you have to see that they are more uh, people-oriented, or are you kind of locked into a, a given situation with them? Well, I do what I can, and uh, as I, I like to see these movies, and I like the end result of all mm -hmm. that effects work. I, I'm enormously respectful of the work that Industrial Light and Magic has done on the Star Wars movies on Raiders. Um, it's amazing stuff to me, but it's great. It's one thing to sit there and, and see it for two hours, another to work for a year and a half mm -hmm. on those effects, which is what these people do with enormous skill. Um, I don't think I have much interest in uh, directing that kind yeah. of thing. I want to talk to you about the, the two films you've directed thus far. Uh, now let's begin with Body Heat, if we could. Mm -hmm. This is a film I admired a great deal. Now, how much pre-planning went into the, the look of the film? Well, a great deal. I um, because I wrote it, you know, all the things I've written, you direct them in your head the first time. That's when they first get made. Mm -hmm. And you see the whole movie. And then if you're a screenwriter who doesn't direct, you hand them over to somebody else and they change it. It's not necessarily that they change it to uh, something worse. It's just that they see it differently than you. But if you direct your own work, as, as in Body Heat, you can sort of realize it as you saw it. So that movie looks very much as it looked in my head when mm -hmm. I first wrote it. And so an enormous amount of thought went into that. When I hired a production designer, cameraman, I told them what I was thinking. They gave me their ideas. And it worked out pretty well. It's a, a heavily uh, textured movie. Yeah. When you were thinking about how the film would look and, and, and writing and so forth, were you influenced at all by any of the, the film noirs of the, of the 40s? Absolutely. The double indemnity, things like that? Mm, yes. The, it's a genre that interested me. It, gave, it gives you license to work in a very kind of Baroque style. Mm -hmm. And it was the first movie I was making. And I didn't want it to be timid. And I didn't want it to be uh, standard. I wanted to exercise some muscles my first time out. And I was looking for a form that would let me do that and would not be contrary to the content of the movie. Mm -hmm. um, the Big Chill is shot very differently. I think it's very sophisticated the way it's shot, but it's much simpler. It's much less um, stylized. Mm -hmm. And yet I think it's appropriate to the material, and that's really what you're trying to achieve all the time. One of the things that, that interested me most about The Big Chill is the fact that even though it centers on a particular age group, I think its appeal is going to cover all areas because at the screening of the film, I was noticing that uh, the ages varied everywhere from 10 to, I would imagine, 70 or so, and everybody seemed to appreciate the movie uh, totally. And I think that's a bit unusual. 
I'm very excited about the reaction we've gotten because um, I always wanted the movie to be kind of universal because I thought that these were issues that were important to people, no matter what age you were. Mm -hmm. But I've been surprised at how well it plays for people who are much younger than the people in the movie and much older than the people in the movie. They, clearly, these are issues that concern people. And there aren't too many movies made that really talk about people's lives. Yeah. Maybe that has something to do with it. There's a kind of relief at seeing something true up there. So you don't have to have been a, a teenager in the, in the 60s to appreciate this film? No, I don't think so. Yeah. How would you characterize yourself as a director on the set? Are you um, very mindful of, of actors' contributions? And if they come to you and say, hey, I've got a great idea for this? I try to be open to everybody on the set. And a filmmaking unit is really, it's like a little family. It's not that everyone treats everyone perfectly or any of that. It's that you do create a unit in which everyone's contribution has to be acknowledged. Now, sometimes there isn't a lot from someone, and sometimes a, an unexpected source will give you a great idea. Mm -hmm. um, I try to be open to all that's going on, but I, I feel it's my job to make the decision constantly, yes, this, should, this helps further what I had in mind, or no, even though it's a good idea, mm -hmm. it's not right for this movie. What do you think was the biggest challenge in, in bringing the big chill to the screen? Was there one thing that you had to surmount to, to make the whole thing gel, or were there just a lot, of <laughs> a lot of things? The hardest thing was getting someone to back it. No one wanted to make the movie. I thought that I wouldn't have a terribly tough time. I, I had a good record. Um, it wasn't an expensive picture. And it seemed to me obvious that it uh, would appeal to people because it was about their lives and mm -hmm. it's funny. Everyone in all the studios thought that it w couldn't possibly make any money and they were loath to support it. I went all over town before circumstances brought me to Columbia and where Guy McElwain and Frank Price uh, agreed to make the film. Hmm. That's amazing. That it, I, I, I'm surprised to hear that. I would have thought they would have jumped at such a... I thought so too. <laughs> <laughs> I was wrong. Let me ask you about your use of music in films. Um, Body Heat had a beautiful score by John Barry, and this film features, um, uh, for want of a better term, period songs. How did you decide on that approach, rather than an original score? Yeah, I, was always, I had always intended to use 60s music in exactly the way it's used in this film. The character who's the host has only that music in his house. Um, he is very much of that time devoted to that music, skeptical about more recent music. That's a little like me. That's my favorite music. And that music has a real emotional content for me. Mm -hmm. It brings back very strong sense memories of things I was feeling when I was in school, yeah. when I was with my old friends. And that's how the music is used. My wife had a lot to do with the selection of it. Well, this is one of those occasions where I think um, source music works uh, beautifully. Sometimes I think it's a directors can use it as an easy way out, but obviously yes, a lot of care went into it this time. We thought about it quite a bit. Yeah. I want to thank you very much for taking this time out uh, for talking to me. It's been a pleasure. Well, thank you very much. And much success with the picture. Thank you.